Hi guys, and welcome to another beer review. Today we're looking at the first beer that I've tried from the Torside Brewing, and uh, this was uh, a recommendation from John over at the Northern Beer Temple in Wigan, which uh, is where I obviously picked this beer up from. Went there fairly recently, did a little bit of beer haul because I was um, picking up beers to send to my good friend Dean from Dean's Beer Reviews, and I picked up a few for myself. And uh, yeah, this was one that he highly highly recommended because I've only been there twice now but each time I've been there we ended up talking for like half an hour just about beer and you know he grew up in Germany so we were talking about you know German brewing culture and of course a uh, big fan of the Rauk beers and he suggested that I check out this one from Torside which is the Franconia which is uh, a Rauk beer as uh, you would expect so uh, bottled on the August of 16th Best Before End is, well, August 2016, Best Before End, August 2017. So, it's uh, around a month old, uh, depending on what date in August it was uh, bottled on. But, uh, yeah, not exactly too sure where these uh, guys are based. Um, if anybody knows this postcode, SK223JJ, um, I, I'm going to put their website and social media links down below anyway, so you can find out more about them. But uh, yeah, I've seen their beers um, a lot uh, when I've been back in the UK. And uh, yeah, what better way to start than uh, trying their attempt at one of my favourite styles of beer. And uh, according to John, this is, you know, you'd think that this was a German brewed Rauch beer, which, yeah, happy days indeed. So yeah, 5.2% in a lovely 500ml bottle with cool artwork coming from uh, Emma Sidwell. So she's got a website or social media platforms where you can check out her work. I'll put those links down below because I do like to promote the art artists. And uh, yeah, I love the uh, the logo for these guys. Reminds me of um, a collective called Neesden Control Centre. Um, definitely interesting outfit of designers. Um, but yeah, lovely sort of like drawing of... Uh, Somewhere, I'm guessing that's somewhere in Germany, maybe? I'm not sure, does that architecture look German? Or if it's uh, related to Torside? Yeah, I'm going in a little bit blind on this one, so apologies about the uh, misinformation to the guys over at Torside. But uh, yeah, craft in 500 mils. I'm, uh, I'm definitely behind that. So I'm going to use my Nognur glass for this one. Because I seem to have, uh, even though I've only been back in England for about a week, I seem to have misplaced my Augustina glass. And I thought that would be a perfect beer to pour into this. So I won't pour it all in. I do think it's bottle conditioned, so we'll see how it changes in a little bit. But uh, straight away, that's got a lovely bit of haze to it. Lovely ruby tones, but it's offset with a nice sort of cola-like brown hint to it. A bit of lovely haze in there, so I'd imagine lower down in the bottle we might get a few bits and bobs here's to hoping but um yeah it's got that slight smokiness to it and uh yeah it definitely looks like what i would consider a rauch beer so beer didn't really pour any head at all i think that's just due to my pour not the conditioning of the beer so we'll give it a little bit of a swill spill it all over my hand and get our nose in see what we get and that is what you want from a rauch beer Lovely sort of like slight sweet tones in there, but you get that big peated character coming through. That like classic smoked kippers, almost like a like a honey smoked ham sort of character as well. But yeah, you get that like barbecue grill sort of aroma in there as well. No harshness, it's such a lovely and well-balanced aroma. And that's what I've liked about the German Rauch beers that I've had is, yeah, the flavours are a little bit out there for most drinkers. Um, it doesn't matter if you're getting into craft or if you've been drinking you know, beers from around the world and of all different sizes for years. The Rauch beer is a uh, really quite taste and, you know, sometimes they can be quite harsh in that smokiness, but... Yeah, that's just a lovely, lovely aroma. Maybe like a slight burnt toast sort of character in the background as well. Oh, yeah, that, that's what I want with a Rauch beer. 
So it uh, looks like a German Rauch beer. Smells like a German Rauch beer. Let's see if they've uh, hit the nail on the head with the style. Cheers, guys. Cheers, John. Alright, it's got this sort of like fruity element to this one. Not like that fruitiness you get from hops. But like sort of um like a slight pear-like character. And then that smokiness comes through really nicely. It is a little bit harsh uh, compared to like let's say the Rauch Beer Märzen from Schlenkerler, because I don't think this is supposed to be a Märzen, it's just labelled as a Rauch Beer, so I'm not sure if it's uh, going for a specific style of the Rauch Beer, but... Yeah, lovely smokiness on this one. It's lovely woody, like wood chips, almost. It's got a medium mouthfeel, upper end of medium. And it's not the boldest taste in beer, but it's really quite filling, um, which is so weird right now. Um, there's no real overriding flavours in this one, aside from the smokiness, which seems to get a little bit stronger towards the back end, as opposed to being hit with that smokiness. It, it lingers a lot more. Toffee apples almost, like a slight uh, Werther's original sort of caramel flavour. And then you get like, when you've had a joint of like gammon or something, and you've like grilled it, smoked it, and it's got that crust on the outside. I love those parts. I always love having like that first slice of a cut of meat because you get that crust in the side. Just, just wonderful. And that's what you sort of get with this one. But then there's sort of like milk chocolate flavours in there. But it all works beautifully. And I tell you what, they've absolutely hit the nail on the head with this one. If you're in the UK and you love your Ralph beers, uh, definitely give these a go if you come across a bottle of it. It's absolutely lovely stuff. And I think I paid like around three quid for it, which is, you know... I'd have happily paid a little bit more. There we go, let's see what happens. I'm not sure if I saw little bits uh, within that foam as it went in. Spilling it all over myself, so it looks like I've pissed myself. But, um, God, look at that. That is bulked up immensely. That has gone so much more hazy, and you can see that bold cloud of sedimentation. Almost like a, a tornado of uh, sedimentation there. Just look how deeper that's gone, like really like almost like rich mahogany. And then you've got a lovely, sort of reminds you of the head of Guinness, which is lovely sweet, smooth and creamy. I know people are going to call me out for referencing Guinness for a beer like this, but I'm a fan of Guinness, so leave me alone. Guinness extra cold in a pub? Pff, happy days, give me a session on that. Smokiness is a little bit muted now, and it's got more of that, like, um, stewed fruit character coming through. But no, there it is. It, it, it's, it's come back in now, now it's in the glass. That smokiness is so lovely. Um, it smells like when you've had a barbecue, and a couple of hours after you've finished, you can still, like, smell it, but it's a little bit more gentle and not as harsh. It's absolutely lovely stuff. I love this beer. It's got a bit more dessert-like now that everything's in the glass. Yeah, I tell you what, they've they've hit the nail on the head with the German Rauch beer style. But there are little intricacies and little flavours and characteristics that just help set it apart from that and makes it stand out in the crowd. And, uh, yeah, I, I can't think of too many reasons to fault this beer. As a fan of Rauch beers, and very traditionally brewed German ones, Torside have done an absolutely wonderful job with this. They really, really have. What an introduction to a brewery 
definitely going to be checking out more of their beers in the future. It's absolutely lovely. I love that caramel chocolatey flavour you're getting in mixing with that smokiness and the cured ham. Honey roasted cured ham. Oh, it's just, I just want a big joint of meat now. And I just want to absolutely demolish it with my hands, like PA Brew New style. Because, um, yeah, that's like, it's like a roast dinner in a glass. And uh, I want more of it. So I'll definitely, definitely be revisiting that beer uh, in the future because it's awesome. And if you like your Rauk beers, definitely give this one a go. <laughs> if you like your traditional ones, you're going to love it. But if you want something a little bit different as well, it's going to appeal. And the great thing about it is it's not a really harsh one. So it's not an absolute attack on your palate or anything like that. And um, yeah, wonderful beer. Um, I can't fault it. I'm giving that a 10 out of 10. Absolutely fantastic stuff from Torside. So if you've tried this beer, then let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. What are some of your favourite British brewed Rauch beers? Now hit me up with some of those suggestions because um, I do love me a good Rauch beer. Um, and what other beers from Torside would you recommend? for me. So um, yeah, if you have tried this, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Uh, check out Torside. Uh, of course, check out uh, Emma Sidwell. And obviously, check out Northern Beer Temple. Like I said, if you find yourself even like a train station away from Wigan, get off the train. It's like a 20 minute walk, if that, from the train station. Well, Northwestern and Wigan Walgate. And uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm happy that when I want a nice little six pack of new and awesome craft beers, it's literally like 40 minutes away from me. Happy days. I'm just, a, I'm living in a small village called Skelmersdale. Is it a village or is it a town? I don't know. You know, where nothing really happens. And now I don't have to go to Manchester to get craft beer. Now I don't have to go to Liverpool to get craft beer. Literally next door to me is a whole new world and um, yeah, I know I'm gushing. Just let me let me gush, okay? Um, and it's it's just fantastic. I don't know how anybody can complain about the craft beer landscape right now because I've seen these articles of people like saying, "Oh, if we reach breaking point, oh, blah 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 blah." It's like give me a friggin' break. You know, what a time to be a lover of good beer in the UK. You know, you've got stuff that you can put in your fridge at the supermarkets and some really genuinely nice surprises. And then more and more bottle shops, more and more bars are popping up in the, the smallest of cities, the most reclusive of villages and towns. And um, yeah, long may it continue. I'm sure my wallet doesn't share that same sentiment, but I think a lot of you guys will agree with me. So, um, yeah, I'm very, very excited about some of the weird and wonderful beers that I can pick up now I'm back in the UK. So, uh, yeah, thank you for sticking with me uh, through this review. I'm hoping to uh, have this area behind me have some interesting imagery or whatever, um, just to make it look a little bit nicer, because it looks like I'm literally in like a hostel right now. <laughs> And, um, yeah, so thank you guys for watching. And, uh, yeah, check out this beer if you like your Rauch beers. And, uh, more importantly, um, yeah, check out my Rauch beer playlist. I think it's quite small, actually, because I've just ended up drinking the Rauch beers that I've had. Um, but, yeah, check out my UK craft beer playlist as well for some more wonderful examples of uh, some really high-quality beer here in the UK. Anyway, going on for way too long. Thank you for being so patient with me. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you guys pretty soon. And see you next time. Almost had a really nice sign off then. But I fucked it up. See you guys later.